Hello and welcome to this edition of Master Tech. During this program, we'll be showing you the design features and technical service procedures of Chrysler's new four-cylinder, 16-valve, dual overhead cam engine. This program is divided into three sections. In the first segment, we'll provide the inside story on the various components that make up the 2.4-liter engine. Then in section two, we'll show you how to service the engine's timing belt and camshafts. And finally, we'll wrap up the program by giving you some helpful hints on how to service the twin counter-rotating balance shafts found on Chrysler's new four-cylinder engine. As you can see, this video is loaded with plenty of valuable service information. So let's get started with the program. The new 2.4-liter .4 four-cylinder dual overhead cam engine will be available on the Dodge Stratus in February of 1995, and it will be matched with Chrysler's 41TE automatic four-speed transaxle. The 2.4-liter will also be offered on the new minivan later this spring. It will replace the 2.5-liter single overhead cam four-cylinder engine. The new 2.4 liter has several innovative features that will make it a great addition to Chrysler Corporation's four-cylinder lineup. For example, the new dual overhead cam 2.4 liter has a higher horsepower and torque rating than the single overhead cam 2.5 liter engine used in the current minivan. With its broad, flat torque curve, the 2.4 liter engine will reach 90% of its peak torque between 2,000 and 5,000 RPM. And at the top of its band, it will deliver 150 horsepower at 5,200 RPM and 167 pounds-feet of torque at 4,000 RPM. The 2.4 liter displaces 148 cubic inches, and its compression ratio is 9.4 to 1. The new dual overhead cam 2.4 liter engine combines the best features from two proven single overhead cam engines. For example, Chrysler used the 2.5 liter engine as its model for developing the broken timing belt valve clearance and the twin counter rotating balance shaft design on the new 2.4 liter. The 2 liter engine also made a significant contribution to the 2.4 liter's design. It shares several design features and engine components with the new four cylinder, including the use of a bed plate, powdered metal connecting rods, crankshaft design sealing features, returnless fuel system, sequential multi-port fuel injection, and direct ignition. But even though the 2.4 liter engine shares common features with the 2 liter, it doesn't mean that the new power plant is a knockoff of the older four-cylinder. The 2.4 liter has unique features all its own. For instance, it has a longer stroke than the 2 liter and a taller engine block to accommodate the lengthier stroke. Plus, it has twin counter-rotating balance shafts that help reduce the vibration inherent in larger displacement four-cylinder engines. The 2.4-liter engine identification number is located on the left rear of the cylinder block, behind the starter. Interpreting the engine identification number will help you distinguish the 2.4-liter block from that of the 2-liter. Now let's look at some of the components that make up the 2.4-liter engine. The 2.4-liter cylinder head is very similar to the head on the 2-liter dual overhead cam engine. But there is one big difference. The 2.4-liter engine uses camshaft timing that prevents the valves from coming in contact with each other if the camshafts are rotated independently. The 2.4-liter engine's low-profile aluminum cylinder head features pent roof combustion chambers, which house four valves for each cylinder. Powdered metal valve seats are pressed into the cylinder head. And between the valves, at the center of the chamber, there's an integral spark plug tube. Two cast iron camshafts sit on top of the cylinder head. Each camshaft is supported by six bearing journals, and there are two cam lobes for each cylinder. The flange at the rear journal controls the end play of each camshaft, while the seals at the front of the camshafts control oil. Each camshaft is driven by a sprocket. The intake camshaft is located toward the front of the vehicle. The exhaust camshaft sits near the bulkhead. The camshaft sprockets and camshafts are not interchangeable, 
So their positions will have to be identified before they are removed from the engine. The 2.4 liter camshaft sprockets are the same sprockets used on the 2 liter engine. You can identify which side faces front by the words 2.4 liter front stamped on the sprocket. A camshaft position sensor is located on the intake camshaft at the rear of the cylinder head. As I mentioned earlier, the dual overhead cam 2.4 liter engine uses four valves per cylinder and each valve is actuated by a roller cam follower which pivots on a stationary hydraulic lash adjuster. The roller cam follower assembly reduces low speed friction and cam wear. The head diameter on the intake valves are larger than the exhaust valves. Both valves have a face angle of 45 degrees. The valve springs are not interchangeable with the springs on the 2 liter engine. The 2.4 liter engine cylinder head cover is made of die cast aluminum. It has four spark plug openings across the top and a PCV oil separator located inside. The separator controls oil pullover when the engine's running at high RPM. It also supplies fresh air to the crankcase. The timing belt on the 2.4 liter rotates clockwise around the camshaft sprockets, idler pulley, water pump, crankshaft sprocket, and the automatic tensioner pulley. Under normal conditions, the 2.4 liter timing belt should last 100,000 miles, which is when it is scheduled for replacement. The intake manifold is a two-piece aluminum casting that has individual primary runners that lead from a plenum to the cylinders. The throttle body, MAP sensor, intake air temperature sensor, EGR tube, and fuel injectors are mounted on the intake manifold. The exhaust manifold is made of nodular cast iron. The relatively thin walls of the manifold provide quicker catalytic converter operation. The oxygen sensor is located near the manifold outlet. The two-piece cast iron cylinder block uses a ladder type bed plate. It's designed to provide the structural rigidity needed to reduce noise, vibration, and harshness. Unlike the 2-liter engine, the 2.4-liter cylinder block has a closed deck design. The cylinder bores are separated by a small water jacket cast between each cylinder. The rear crankshaft oil seal housing is integral with the block. An oil gallery at the right side of the block feeds the five main bearings. On the cast aluminum pistons, the pop-up top and valve notches provide room for valve clearance. This design, along with the taller block, gives the 2.4 liter engine its broken timing belt valve clearance feature. The 2.4 liter's piston pins are press fit into the pistons and connecting rods. Individual pistons and connecting rods are serviced as assemblies. The connecting rods can only be assembled one way because they are laser scribed and fractured during the manufacturing process. Fracturing controls the balance of the piston and it keeps the cap from shifting in its position. If damage occurs to the fractured surface during service, then the entire piston and connecting rod assembly will have to be replaced. Forged in locating lobes are provided for reassembly. The cap is secured to the rod with two bolts. No nuts are needed. When tightening the bolts, be sure to torque them to 20 foot-pounds, plus one-quarter turn. Lubrication is provided to the bearings through slots drilled in the connecting rod. The 2.4 liter crankshaft is supported by five main bearings. The number three bearing controls the crankshaft's thrust. Eight counterweights are used on the crankshaft to reduce engine noise, distribute bearing loads, and minimize internal stress. At both ends of the crankshaft, there is a seal that controls engine oil. The timing belt sprocket is pressed onto the nose of the crankshaft, and it drives the timing belt, camshaft sprockets, and water pump. A crankshaft position sensor is mounted on the engine block behind the generator. One of the big features on the new 2.4 liter engine is the twin counter-rotating balance shafts. The 2.4 liter uses a balance shaft system similar to the one used on the 2.5 liter single overhead cam four-cylinder engine. In fact, 
All the components are the same, except that the balance shaft carrier has a shorter pedestal height than the 2.5 liter. Another difference between the two four-cylinder engines is that the balance shaft drive chain sprocket on the new 2.4 liter is pressed onto the crankshaft while it's bolted on the 2.5 liter. The balance shafts rotate in opposite directions at twice crankshaft speed. As a result, the counter-rotation of the shafts offsets the reciprocating mass of the engine. The new 2.4 liter engine also features a crankshaft driven gyrotor oil pump located behind the cast aluminum housing on the front of the engine block. The pump pressurizes the engine oil and sends it to the oil filter, then to the main oil gallery. The main oil gallery routes oil to the cylinder head through a vertical passage containing a block mounted restrictor. The head, in turn, supplies oil to the camshafts and lash adjusters through a gallery that runs the full length of the head. After running through the cylinder head, engine oil returns to the oil pan by draining down the inclined engine block. The pistons are splash lubricated by slots on the connecting rod assemblies. The 2.4 liters oil pan is made from a laminated metal to plastic to metal sound deadening material to help reduce noise. At the front of the 2.4 liter engine, there is a die cast aluminum water pump, which is bolted directly to the cylinder block. The pump's drive sprocket is driven by the engine's timing belt. The water pump will need to be replaced if an inspection reveals any cracks or damage to the body, impeller, or sprocket. The 2.4 liter cooling system uses a thermostat housing which incorporates a radiator nipple, filler neck, and overflow nipple. The thermostat is located below the housing. Now that we've discussed the many important features found on the new 2.4 liter dual overhead cam engine, let's try a review question to test your knowledge. The new 2.4 liter engine has five main bearings. Which main bearing controls the thrust of the crankshaft? A, number two, B, number three, or C, number five? The answer is B. The number three main bearing controls the crankshaft's thrust. Next, we'll perform several service procedures that would normally be done with the engine in the vehicle. But in order to give you a better look at the process, we're going to perform the procedures on an engine stand. As you know, there are a number of things that could cause poor engine performance. One of them is incorrect cam timing. To check the camshaft timing on a 2.4 liter engine, remove the number one spark plug and set up a dial indicator so that its probe touches the top of the piston in the number one cylinder. Now turn the engine's crankshaft damper bolt so that the number one piston hits top dead center on the compression stroke. With the piston at top dead center, remove the three bolts securing the upper timing belt cover to the engine. Then remove the cover to expose the camshaft sprockets. Now check the timing marks on both sprockets. They should be lined up across from each other if the number one piston is on the compression stroke. But if the timing marks are nowhere near each other, then the piston is probably on the exhaust stroke. So you'll have to turn the crankshaft one more revolution. If the timing belt needs to be inspected, or if you need to service the camshafts, then you'll have to remove the engine's accessory drive belts before proceeding. To service the timing belt, remove the crankshaft damper bolt. Install insert number 6827 and special tool 1026 on the crankshaft damper. Then pull the damper from the nose of the crankshaft. With the damper removed, loosen the three bolts securing the lower timing belt cover to the engine. Then remove the cover. Next, remove the front engine mounting bracket, which is located between the upper and lower timing belt covers. If you plan on reinstalling the timing belt, be sure to mark the direction of the belt's movement so that you can reinstall it to rotate in the same direction. After you've marked the belt, Loosen the automatic tensioner fasteners and slide the tensioner away from the tensioner pulley. With the tension released, you can remove the timing belt from the engine. 
after the timing belt's been removed, the automatic tensioner needs to be removed from the engine so that its plunger can be compressed to reinstall the timing belt. When examining the belt, make sure you inspect both sides. Replace the belt if it shows any signs of cracking or abnormal wear, and make sure it isn't missing any drive teeth. During your inspection, be sure to check the back of the timing belt for abnormal hardness by pressing down on the belt with your fingernail. If your fingernail doesn't leave an impression on the back of the belt, then the belt should be replaced. If you need to replace the front camshaft oil seals, then you'll have to remove the timing belt as I've just described. With the timing belt removed and each camshaft sprocket properly identified, remove the camshaft sprocket bolts while holding the sprocket steady with special tool C4687 and adapter C4687-1. Then remove the sprockets. Next, remove the idler pulley, tensioner pulley, and the rear timing belt cover from the engine. Now remove the camshaft oil seal from the cylinder head with special tool C4679. Before you install a new camshaft seal, inspect the mating surface on the cylinder head for dirt, nicks, or varnish. If any of those conditions exist, polish the camshaft oil seal surface with 400 grit paper. Then install a new front camshaft oil seal into the cylinder head with special tool MD998306. Continue to tap on the tool until the seal is flush with the head. After you have inserted both seals, reinstall the rear timing belt cover. Then install the camshaft sprockets with the stamped words 2.4 liter front facing you. Make sure the intake sprocket is installed on the intake camshaft. With everything properly positioned, tighten the camshaft sprockets to 75 foot-pounds using the special tool to keep the sprocket from rotating. To reinstall the timing belt, you'll need to perform the camshaft and crankshaft timing procedure. Begin the procedure by turning the crankshaft sprocket to top dead center, aligning the arrow on the sprocket with the arrow on the oil pump housing. Now set the camshaft timing marks together by aligning the notches on the sprockets. Then rotate the crankshaft counterclockwise one half tooth from top dead center. Next, install the timing belt, starting at the crankshaft. And go around the water pump sprocket, idler pulley, camshaft sprockets, and finally, the tensioner pulley. Remember, whenever you remove the timing belt, the automatic tensioner plunger will have to be reset to its retracted position. You can do this by installing the hydraulic tensioner in a vise, but make sure you orient the tensioner so that the side normally facing out on the engine is facing up. With everything in position, compress the plunger until the hole in the plunger rod is aligned with the holes in the tensioner body. When the holes are aligned, insert the tensioner retaining pin into the holes to hold the plunger in place. With the timing belt loosely installed around all the sprockets and pulleys, Turn the crankshaft to top dead center to take up the slack in the belt. Now install the automatic tensioner on the engine block, but don't tighten the fasteners. With the tensioner loosely installed, apply 250 inch-pounds of torque against the tensioner pulley with a dial or beam-type torque wrench. Then slide the tensioner against the pulley and tighten its two fasteners to 275 inch-pounds. Unless you have three hands, you'll probably need an assistant for this part of the procedure. With the tensioner tightened down, pull the retainer pin from the tensioner. If the tensioner's pressure is set correctly, the pin will slide freely in and out of its hole. If everything appears okay, rotate the crankshaft two revolutions to make sure the camshaft timing marks line up. If they do, install the upper and lower timing belt covers and engine mounting bracket in the reverse order they were removed. Then install the crankshaft damper with special tool 6792. See this month's reference book for the individual special tool pieces you'll need to use during this procedure. After the damper's installed, 
tighten the damper bolt to 105 foot-pounds. Now that you understand how to service the timing belt on the new 2.4 liter engine, let's try another review question. When installing the timing belt, how far do you need to rotate the crankshaft sprocket counterclockwise from top dead center? A, one half tooth, B, one tooth, or C, two teeth? The answer is A. You need to rotate the crankshaft counterclockwise one half tooth from top dead center. There are two ways to remove the twin counter-rotating balance shafts on the 2.4 liter engine. One way is through the rear cover with the balance shaft carrier installed on the engine. And the other way is by removing the carrier from the engine as a complete assembly. To remove the balance shafts with the carrier installed on the engine, you'll need to drain the engine oil and remove the automatic tensioner, the timing belt, camshaft sprockets, idler pulley, tensioner pulley, and the rear timing belt cover. Next, remove the crankshaft sprocket with special tool 6793 and insert C4685C2. Then remove the oil pan as well as the oil pickup tube. Now remove the crankshaft keyway. Then loosen the fasteners securing the oil pump body to the engine and remove the pump. With the oil pump gone, remove the balance shaft drive chain cover, plus the chain guide and automatic tensioner. After the chain guide and tensioner have been taken off the engine, remove the double-ended gear cover retaining stud and the two retaining bolts that hold the chain sprocket and balance shaft gears onto the assembly. With all the fasteners removed, Separate the balance shaft drive chain and sprocket from the engine. Use two wide pry bars to work the drive sprocket back and forth off the gear shaft. Next, remove the rear cover from the back of the balance shaft carrier. Then, pull the two balance shafts from the carrier. And that's all you have to do to remove the balance shafts from the engine with the carrier remaining on the block. To remove the carrier as a complete assembly, Take off the chain cover and remove the balance shaft chain sprocket retaining bolt. Now loosen the pivot and adjusting bolts holding the tensioner against the drive chain. With the chain tensioner relaxed, move the chain driven balance shaft through the chain sprocket and allow the chain loop to support the sprocket. Then remove the chain and sprocket. Finish the procedure by removing the four bolts securing the balance shaft carrier to the crankcase. That's all there is to it. The only thing left to do is to check the balance shafts for galling or any other signs of oil starvation. To reinstall the balance shaft carrier, position the carrier on the crankcase and tighten its four attaching bolts to 40 foot-pounds. When the balance shaft carrier is reinstalled on the engine, the balance shafts need to be timed to the crankshaft. To do this, turn the balance shafts until their keyways are standing up in the 12 o'clock position. Now install the short hub drive gear on the sprocket driven balance shaft and the long hub gear on the gear driven shaft. The gears must be installed with the keyway straight up and the gear timing marks lined up across from each other. With the two balance shaft gears properly positioned, Install the balance shaft gear cover and tighten the double-ended stud and washer to 105 inch-pounds. Now turn the crankshaft until the timing mark on the chain sprocket lines up with the parting line on the left side of the number one main bearing cap. Now place the chain over the crankshaft sprocket so that the nickel-plated chain link is directly over the timing mark on the crankshaft sprocket. With the chain properly positioned on the crankshaft sprocket, place the balance shaft sprocket into the chain so that the yellow dot on the sprocket mates with the lower nickel-plated chain link. This link is eight links from the upper one. Now slide the balance shaft sprocket onto the nose of the chain-driven balance shaft, making sure that the balance shaft keyways are still pointing in the 12 o'clock position. If the balance shafts are timed correctly, 
then the timing mark on the sprocket should line up with the lower nickel-plated chain link, which, in turn, should be in line with the notch on the gear cover. If everything lines up correctly, place a block of wood between the crankshaft counterbalance and the crankcase to prevent the crankshaft and balance shaft gears from rotating. Then tighten the balance shaft retaining bolts to 250 inch-pounds. Now install the chain tensioner on the gear cover so that it rides loosely against the chain. After the tensioner is installed, position the chain guide on the double-ended stud, making sure its tab fits into the slot on the gear cover. With the chain guide properly positioned, install the nut and washer assembly and tighten it to 105 inch-pounds. Now place a 39 thousandths of an inch shim between the tensioner and the chain and apply approximately six pounds of pressure to take up the slack in the chain. With the load applied, tighten the top tensioner bolt to 105 inch pounds. Then tighten the pivot bolt to the same specification. After fastening down the tensioner, remove the shim and install the carrier cover, tightening its bolts to 105 inch pounds. Now let's try a brief review question to test your knowledge about the balance shafts on the 2.4 liter engine. When the balance shaft carrier is reinstalled on the engine, the balance shafts need to be timed to the crankshaft with the balance shaft keyways pointing in which direction? A, 12 o'clock, B, 3 o'clock, or C, 6 o'clock? The answer is A. When the balance shaft carrier is reinstalled on the engine, the balance shafts need to be timed to the crankshaft with the balance shaft keyways standing up in the 12 o'clock position. Well, that concludes our program on the two-point fitter engine. Join us next time when we discuss 41TE and 42LE transmission diagnostics. We'll see you next time on Master Tech.